Hello and welcome to Pro Modelers. Um, this week's particular video build we're going to be doing a bit of a special on um, silver finished aircraft or um, aircraft aluminium finish or new metal finish or whichever way you want to call it. So what we're going to be doing is a Tamiya P47 Thunderbolt and we're going to be doing a P51 Mustang. Um, both of them are going to be in silver um, finishes but obviously what we're going to do is going to do the P51 here and we're going to be using Valero acrylics only and then over here on this Tamiya on the P47 here we're going to be using Alclads um, and we've got various shades and I've got a few more as well and then at the end we can compare the two because obviously there's a lot of fours and against um, obviously these are a lacquer finish versus acrylic um, and we can go through that. So we're not gonna focus too heavily on the build. Obviously we'll go right the way through them, both step by step, but it won't be that in detail. But what we're gonna do um, is spend a couple of shows showing you exactly the best ways to spray, obviously our clads and the acrylics on the models. Okay, so we're gonna start on with the P51. Um, usual thing, we're gonna be going through the cockpit. It's quite a straightforward kit, there's not a lot to it. Certainly when you compare it to the P47, um, this is quite a, a basic kit. Obviously it's quite old, it's been around the block a few a few years now, but the thing is with it, <clears throat> it's got some lovely, lovely little details. Tammy obviously spent a lot of time working with actually reference photos and probably the real aircraft to bring you quite a stunning kit. Um, it's very well tooled, very well engineered. It goes together extremely well with no real fit problems anywhere, um, which is obviously the quality you get with Tamiya. Now we just cut out the use large parts like that and then we're going to cut out the actual cockpit and everything bits there then we're going to whip out the tub so okay as you see we've got a few of the parts all cut out now I've sanded and cleaned up um, all the parts I've just stuck the seat um, to the seat back which is pretty straightforward um, now what I'm going to do is I'm just putting the um, back part for the pedals to the instrument panel because that can go together now and we'll let that dry to one side now unfortunately the um the sort of weak point on the kit is the instrument panel now if i bring you in a bit um there's not a lot going on there isn't any dials or anything there so you have two ways to run with it you either um, obviously get a photo etch replacement or you can actually get resin cockpits for the kit and do it like that um, if you've got some old decals lying around and they've actually got instrument parts you could cut them all out and place them in or you could literally just give it a dry brush and bring it to life like that but unfortunately if they'd actually put the needles on we could have actually dry brushed it and a bit of our weathering wash and done it like that but unfortunately um, that bit was sort of the weak point on the kit and really is that the only weak point is that instrument panel okay the Tamiya um, P47 Thunderbolt basically a new kit it's a lovely kit goes together a dream um, I built one before which is the razor bike but I haven't actually done this particular type Fantastic detail. It's a, a, a few steps on, if you like, from the P4, uh, 51 Mustang, um, because obviously, you know, improvements in tooling and the way things to go together means they can make a complex kit go together very, very well, which obviously when you make it more complex, it makes it far more detailed. Lovely looking decals as well. But as you can see, perhaps in the, the sprue shots here, there's quite a few when you compare it to, obviously you just get two sprues with the P51. But there again, you know, they're all very nicely detailed and because they're broken down the way they are now, certainly for the copper area, you know, there's not a massed reason to rush out and buy a replacement um, resin cockpit set because the cockpit set's in here, lovely detail and you won't really get much of an improvement. So we're gonna get going on the cockpit. Okay, so now it's time to spray. Um, now the call outs on the colours are a little bit odd, obviously for the P51 um, being an older kit it calls out for older colours. Now Tammy actually do make an interior green now so when it calls out for funny colour codes you know what it is. But we're going to be using, whoops, sorry, the Valero Model Air. Um, it's in number 10010. Um, I haven't got much of it left, you have to get an ordering for that. But we're going to spray both the cockpits all in one. Okay, neat, straight from the bottle in like so um, 0.4 needle set in there about 30 psi quite a high air pressure because it's not very detailed so what we're going to do is just spray um, here on the I might bring you in a little bit um, here on the uh, Mustang it's in between the lines if you like there's two lines 
so we're just going to light spray just to start with and because we've got lots of bits we'll just leave it like that move on to the next bit and then we can come back to them all afterwards and give them a second coat so we'll go like that then obviously we've got the front parts of the cockpit now i know the cockpit on the mustang is pretty much black in most places but we'll just do this bit and then we can mask up so to speak before we move on same with the p47 here um, obviously the cockpit sides do most of it but just in case there's a little bit of show through anywhere we're just going to blow in that entire area just in case just like that same goes for the other side little blowings and then for the seats everywhere we're going to obviously i know it's not this color but it acts as like a primer if you like for our hand painting because we're going to do quite a fair bit of hand painting in here Let's stick that in there same with the cockpit sides um, if you're hand painting the Valero Model Air you are going to definitely need to use a, a, a primer of some sort so this is probably a good way of doing it um, by actually spraying it the interior colour that you're doing um, it will save a lot of problems so we're just going to go in here. It'll give the paint some to grip to. There we go. I've just got to do the seat. When you're airbrushing, just make sure you go in every direction there is because obviously there's nothing worse that once you've sprayed, you suddenly notice you've missed a bit, especially if you've cleaned out your colour cup and everything already. Okay, I've attached the rear bulkhead um, to the cockpit section here on this one already. Just speed of time, just it's easier to paint with it in there now. Okay, and there we go, that will do for the moment. And then these now dry on the other side, so we can then continue our go around like that. Just the same, second coat absolutely everywhere. And there we go. And obviously, we've got a little bit of green left over there in the colour cut. So we'll pour that back into the bottle. So we're just gonna let those dry for a moment. Okay, so now the cream work is done and dry. Now what we want to do is start um, the weathering and painting process. So in a lot of ways, it's easier. Some people weather afterwards, I do it during. You know, it's totally up to you which way you do it, but obviously, you know, it, it's done to personal choice. Now the way I do it is, he says, look at one, if I get my, uh, Oh, we're done with it. Here it is somewhere. Oh, that'll do. Let's get an uptown Tamiya pot just here. Now, this is my little trick. I don't actually use the Pro Modeler's weathering wash for washing out cockpits, purely because um, I want it to be a nice smooth and to dirty it and to dull everything down in one where the wash will do that, but it may be a little bit too heavy, especially on you know a fine little details around instruments and things like that. Okay, what I do, I take one drop of black paint. I'm using the Valero Model Air, but it doesn't matter what you use, as long as it's a flat. Okay, and then what I do is get some water. Okay, and just give it three drops of water, like that. Okay, and then one drop of acrylic thinners. Now, what the acrylic thinners will do is disperse it. It will break the the surface tension when it's on. So you just mix it all around like that. Now to be honest, that's a little bit strong. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna add just a touch more water to that. Other three drops, because obviously I'll put a bit of a, too big a drop on. And we mix it up just like so. Okay, now if I find you something good to show you, put it on this instrument now, if I bring you in a bit, Okay, so then all you do is brush it on, just like that. 
everywhere and immediately you'll see all the details come to life. And there we go, just like that. Then all you do, get a cotton bud, okay, and just gently roll it everywhere just to take off any areas which have got too much on there. And obviously down in your details where you don't want it, just wipe it off now. Now obviously the, the surface has to be completely dry before you do that. It will dry extremely quick because you put a drop of um, acrylic thinners in it. It dries literally within minutes. I can see it actually drying now. Um, and then what you can do, when that's completely dry, you can then paint it and carry on. So if I just show you perhaps on in here, same thing, we just get some like that, okay. And then just brush it straight across, slightly work it in just the way you do with your, your wash as well. Okay, so you've gone like that and then just get your cotton bud and take out all these little bubbly areas if you like, um, you know, which are a bit too much. And if you just give them a, a bit of a dab, it'll just pull it all away. Okay, and then you get any areas where you don't particularly want it like that, like so, and you'll get a nice washed out finish. And then in a moment, when that dries, we'll come back to it and you can see, and I've done one over here already that's sort of drying as we go. Where are you? There we go. And as you can see, it's not quite as in your face. So now when we go around and paint all those little details, um, it'll bring it all to life and you've got that shadowing effect at the background and it's quite an easy way. So if you do it sort of one or half a drop of your black to say um, three drops of water, one drop of acrylic thinners, and then away you go. Don't keep brushing around too hard, otherwise you might end up Obviously, you know, the thinners will eventually eat the way, way through the paint. So we're going to do the same around here. And obviously on floors of cockpits, they get pretty grimy and dirty anyway. So we're not too worried about cleaning this out afterwards. But you've certainly got to make sure it goes everywhere because this will probably stain just a little. Whereas obviously when you're doing your other bits and pieces, it doesn't matter in here you probably see it so there again we're just wiping off any excess we've got just like that as I say when it dries it dries back quite flat and quite nice but as you can see in there you get that sort of you know nice dirty grit worn in there and then when you combine that in a moment as we will do with dry brushing and we're going to be picking out the details in a moment you'll find that it really all just comes to life and comes you know together quite well but it's a quick little thing. And everyone was always surprised when I don't use my wash, but honestly, I don't use it absolutely everywhere. Some things you can't beat, and this is certainly one of them. So we're just gonna do these here. You will find if you leave it and you don't touch the wash at all um, that we've just put on, uh, it, it will fade back. So certain areas, perhaps like seats, it's always a good one. If you wanna give it a real you know, a change of colour. You know, we'll try it on this one here. Obviously you don't want too much there, but this one in here, we'll actually leave that as is, as we will do the P47's one as well. So it's got a nice dirty tray in there. Because I say, when we come along with the dry brushing, obviously you're gonna rub slightly some of this away anyway. So it's one little thing. So we'll just work it in everywhere. Just like so. That one's out and that one down. Just got the floor pan and around the instruments. And there we go. As I say, they won't take long to dry. They literally dry pretty much straight away, really. Um, as is here. Uh, if you can see this one now, if I bring you in. But it's looking quite nice. So as I say, we're gonna get let those totally dry. It is important to let it dry because obviously what you've done, because there's acrylic thinners um, in the wash we've done, it will have softened the undersurface as well. So if you start going in there, pulling it around, you might find that the um, the green coat will start peeling or bubbling or both. Um, so you need those to totally dry. So give them a good sort of hour to dry totally off before you sort of move on. But in the meantime, I'm gonna paint, hand paint um, the instrument panels flat black and work away slowly round obviously instruments 
um, that are black on there that are dry enough to do at the moment before then we move on and then afterwards we can get in there with some dry brushing. Okay so as you can see we've got um, various parts being painted black and going in there. Um, what I'm just doing now is finishing up on the cockpit panel. So as I say because we're using the Valero it's quite thin so you probably need two coats to really make a, a difference um, otherwise you're going to get bits of plastic showing through. But the beauty with the Valeros is that they're very smooth when they go on and they dry to a quite a satin finish as well which is quite nice and they tend to level very well for hand brushing which is another a bonus because you don't then get so many um, brush strokes in your paint. So there we go that's that one dry over there if we just move those out of the way and I zoom you in a bit we can show you what we've got. Now this lot's all still got to dry pretty much but you can see here we've done the radios tight or oh, I've done picked them out in black. Now um, obviously when you're getting around tight areas there's a good example actually here um, around this seat. You know how we've, uh, perhaps if you've seen the tutorial I did on painting wheels where you put a tiny, very thin piece around first, let it wrap in and find its own way round and then you go in afterwards with your thicker paint. Just the same way of painting round complex things like in here, um, obviously following hoses and cables. If you thin the black down a little bit, let the capillary action pull itself around everywhere. Give it about 30 seconds or so just to get a little bit tacky, then go in with your thicker colour and it will merge them for around those areas and that way is a quick and easy way to paint around you know sharp little details that you might have to do. And obviously we've painted around the black on here it's still a bit wet um, we're going to let it all totally dry off and then we can pop back then and get going with the dry brushing. Okay so all the pieces now have been drying for the sort of last half hour what we're going to do now is dry brush them. Now um, two ways of dry brushing you can either do it with a metal effect to really bring things stand out but we want more of a sort of subtle effect in here so what we're going to use um, is some a dark grey any dark grey will do in this case I'm using um, Model Air 054 but it could be literally anything as long as it's a darkish grey good shape bit in the old top there okay then we're going to use quite a large flat brush let it soak it up and, uh, up like that and then all we'll do is we're going to dry brush it all out and then what you want to do is push down heavy at the base of the brush if you like okay then we just keep going across now if you use a bit of kitchen towel like this you can see how you're going to be when you rub it when nothing comes off there you know you're good to go okay so if we bring you in and we show you some of these parts. Okay, so we've got this one here. So all we're going to do, light flicky movements, back and forth, and just start to push down a little bit harder. And then I don't know how well you can see that, but it sort of it will draw the dark with it, um, and then you can sort of really get hold of it a bit harder like this. And there we go. So that does that type of thing. Then afterwards we can pop round um, and do some more lighter brushing around it. So if we just do some more areas, if I just load up that brush because it was drying out quite quickly. Just a moment. Like that, we'll just put a bit more on here. Okay, brush, brush, brush. With your dry brushing, just little gentle taps with it. Don't go brushing quite hard to start with because otherwise you'll lose your um, you'll immediately cover a little bit too much but if we just do here as well if I bring you in and I'll just do a few bits to show you but we run everywhere because also with your dry brushing what you'll do you'll give it that sort of dusty look as well just for a moment and obviously we're going to go around and do floors and sides and literally we're going to work everywhere on it. Now if I show you this detail, let's say on here, it'll, as you can see immediately it sort of flattens it down 
and brings it all to life. Now, obviously, this P47 one has got a, a cockpit, uh, has got instrument panels to do it. But you can see there immediately the grey gets in those bigger areas and brings out all the details quite nicely. So if we just do in here as well, as you see, it just gives a nice, dirty, sort of worn look pretty quickly um, with your model. Without being too much in your face, if you'd used a silver, it perhaps would have a little been a, a bit too much. And obviously this way, it just brings that entire bit to life. So if we're just gonna do just down on the back here, bit everywhere, a bit on the floor. Just like this for the moment. And obviously we've got the other side panel here for the P47. Here we go, just like that. Okay, so then what we're gonna do, <coughs> we're gonna take a little bit of steel, just over here. So what we'll do is just clean that out for one second, like that. Okay, we're gonna grab a little bit of steel, make sure it's had a good, good mix with all your metal colors. Okay, then we'll do a little bit, just like that. Now this time I'm using a lot smaller um, flat brush. Same thing again, it's just a lot smaller size. Let it soak it up. Rub most of it all off. Because literally you want most of this off and out of the way. The silver travels extremely well, um, which is a bit of a downside because sometimes you don't want it to. So what I'm gonna do is show you um, on this cockpit here. If we just, just a quick little flicks over, you can see how quickly um, it brings that to life with the silver. Let's see if we do the little feet, just like that one. Now I know it's pretty difficult for you to see, but you see you get more of a, a sort of muted effect on the other one, although they're both very shiny. So if we come to this one again, and we can just literally flash over the dials if you wanted to, just like that. And then obviously foot pedals get quite a bit of work in the entire area, so we're gonna silver them up. And then obviously floor pan, uh, the floor plan, uh, floor pan even. Um, you're always gonna get some scuffing down there, so we're just gonna go light, light, light brush. And we're just going to rub, like your foot would if you like, on the bottom there. And we're just going to gently rub everywhere in. So we get that, and I know the camera is picking it up as being a bit silvery, but it's actually not as bad as it looks. But it just gives it that bit there. Then obviously um, the switches and that, you can just lightly pop over all those little switches and that and with the darkness behind it'll bring it to life and if you just rub around all the little side panels as well it'll give that effect like the paint's worn off and obviously things like that which really work well and obviously your knobs and your switches would be silver and it goes just like that so we're going to work everywhere around the, the model obviously we've got the radio shack on top here, so we're just gonna brighten up some terminals and give it a the look of scraped paint everywhere. But because you've done the grey, it makes it a far less sharp, um, sort of in your face type look. So we'll just do this one over here as well. Perhaps give it some rub on your paintwork as well, just in little flat areas to give it that look of worn, you know, when they wear through. Obviously, cables and things would get quite a bit, just like that. So we've just got to do the side of the P47 
Same thing, just little things. And then just we're just gonna work it round absolutely everywhere. And in some areas, just to give it that sort of worn look, just like that. And then obviously afterwards we can pop around with a little bit of colour just to bring things up. But as you can see, he says, I'm not showing you in the right place. There we go, there's the camera. Okay, as you can see it, oh, I'm hoping you can see it, it brings it very nicely to life. Let me just do some around the back here. But it's important that you need the grey and you need the green if you like and you need that little bit of wash we put on to make it all work because if you don't and you just did obviously the green with the silver it's too stark so you know and if you didn't do obviously put the silver on with the other ones it will look a bit funny so it's all a trade-off between the two the instrument panel okay i've got the decal right here and we're just going to sit it on the top for a moment we've got plenty of water because it's going to probably take a bit of maneuvering round to get it into the right position. Now you could go around and cut out all the individual dials, which I must admit, I haven't really got the time to do, but it would be my preferred choice. If I had more time, I would cut them all out and place them. Okay, we're roughly in there, so I'll take your clean cotton bud, just like that, and give it a gentle push down just to make sure you're all happy. And then comes the magic formula. We're going to stick in a bit of micro salt, which is the red one. Or, because you're using Tamiya, you could use um, their um, thinners, because it will work just as well. Now, the thing with the micro salt, make sure it goes underneath, because you need it to pull and push and contour and do all its business so make sure you've got a generous quantity now it probably will all shrivel up and look horrible and all the usual bits that you get with it just don't touch it let that stand now for at least 20 minutes and then give it another coat and we'll come back to it no doubt in a moment and i'll show you but you might if i don't if you get any little bubbles where the dials are get a pin pierce them and then get your, co um, your cotton bud give it a squash and then give it another coat of uh, micro sole just to make sure it's all getting in there and working right. But as you can see there already, it's starting to wrinkle up. So we'll leave that to do its bit.